everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass Geometry Common Core Regions. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 15. If one exterior angle of a triangle is acute, so that's always acute is angle that is less than 90 degrees, then the triangle must be, so we're saying we have an exterior angle, so an outside angle of a triangle where it is acute. So it's gonna, that little angle is gonna look something like this. But remember, this is an exterior angle that they're saying. So that means the interior angles of the triangle, if we were to extend this line and connect them, it will look something like this. And then they wanna know what kind of triangle this is here. And you can see that this angle is larger than 90 degrees, which is going to be an obtuse triangle. And that's our answer. Question number 16. Given the information marked on the diagrams below, which pair of triangles cannot always be proven congruent? So let's look at the different triangles they give us. So in choice one, we have side angle, right? Because they both 90 degrees. Side angle and a side. So that one we know. So a side angle side, that's a real thing that we can prove triangles congruent, so that's not our answer. If we look at this example down here, we have a side angle and then another angle. That also works because it is angle, angle side, so that's a real thing, so not gonna be our answer. Choice three, we have side, side, side. So we should be familiar with that one, so that's not our answer. And then the last one, so this by process of elimination must be your answer, but let's look at why. There's a side, a side, and an angle. So side, side, angle does not work. So we know we, can't, we can never prove triangles congruent using side, side, angle. So this is gonna be our answer. A good way to remember this is to realize that side, side, angle spells something backwards, and that's how you know that it's wrong. On to question 17. The diagram below shows a tree growing vertically on a hillside. The angle formed by the tree trunk and the hillside is 100 degrees. The distance from the base of the tree to the bottom of the hill is 140 feet. What is the vertical drop x to the base of the hill to the nearest foot? Notice that this uh, is an exterior angle, so that means this other side uh, must be adding to 180 degrees. So we need this, so this will be 80 degrees. So knowing that this is 80 degrees and this is 90 degrees, we can figure out what this angle is over here by knowing that 180 degrees add up are always the degree measure in a triangle. We can see that this angle here is going to be 10 degrees. So knowing that, we can now find the value of this x value here, this height, using SOHCAHTOA, the regular trigonometry function. So here we go. So look, we want to know what the value of the opposite side is, and we have the hypotenuse value. So that means we're going to be using sine. So we have sine of 10 degrees is equal to the opposite x, which we want to know, over the hypotenuse, 140 feet. And then just cross multiply and we'll get 140 times sine of 10 degrees. So when you plug this into your calculator, just make sure you're in degree mode. So we're in degree mode, good. So then we can plug in 140 sine of 10 degrees and you'll see that we'll get 24.3 something or rather. And when you look at our answer choices, remember that they want this to the nearest foot. So our answer is 24. So 24.3 means we're going to round down to 24. So our answer is choice one. On to question 18. On the set of axes below, triangle LET and triangle L double prime, E double prime, and T double prime are graphed in the coordinate plane where triangle LET is congruent. So these two triangles are congruent. So clearly some transformation happened here. They want to know which one happened in our question, which sequence of rigid motions maps the first triangle onto the next triangle. So let's go through each one. So this is an involved question where we gotta test everything out. So instead of testing every point out, let's go with one point. So we're always, let's just always test out and start with L. So L is, has the value of negative three, six. 
So if we look at our first answer choice, they're saying, was it a reflection over the y-axis followed by a reflection over the x-axis? So if we find a reflection in the y-axis first, so this over y would be over here, which has a value of 3, 6. And then they're saying a reflection over the x-axis, which now would be all the way down here on the other side. So this is six units away. So then six units away on the other side would be down here. So you can see that L double prime is not down here. So this is not gonna be our answer. Choice one is not the answer. So let's try the next one, choice two. So we'll start again with L, which has the value negative 3, 6, and then a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. So just a little reminder about the rules for that. So rotation, 180 degrees. So what we're going to do here is you just negate both the X and Y coordinate. So negative 3 becomes a 3, and then 6 becomes a negative 6. So let's see, does that make sense from L to 3, negative 6, no. So that's not the answer. So let's try number 3. A rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise. So first let's get our coordinate that we start with right here, the original L, negative 3, 6. And then a rotation So the rule for this is you switch the x and y coordinate and then negate the y. So we're going to switch them and then negate the original y value. So it becomes negative 6, negative 3. Okay, so we end up, so let's find this on the coordinate plane, negative 6, negative 3. And then now the next part of this, followed by a reflection over the y axis. So now we want to reflect our point, this equidistant over the y-axis onto the other side. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six units away. So you can see that this ends up being right, this lines up, and this is going to be our answer. So these kinds of transformation questions can be really time consuming. But they, but they don't have to be hard, but you, you do have to think about all those rules and review them, make sure you know them. I have a whole playlist on transformations if you want to review those and go over different practice questions, especially with rotations, those could be like the tricky ones. So please check that out when you get a chance. So if you're looking for more on this test, check out the playlist in the link below. And thanks for stopping by. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!